ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال الله تبارك وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا اقسم بهذا البلد وانت حي بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الانسان Amma ba'd Alhamdulillah We praise Allah We seek His aid We seek His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah From the evil of ourselves And the evil of our deeds Whomsoever Allah guides None can misguide And whomsoever Allah allows To be led astray None can guide and I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may peace and blessings be upon him is his last messenger of his life. O humanity, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and from that created its mate and from that scatters many men and women. O you who believe, fear Allah and die not except in a state of submission. Amma ba'd. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, today we'll be talking about a topic that is relevant to absolutely any and everyone. A topic that is absolutely necessary for each and every Muslim to know of in order for us to live lives that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that topic is stress, man stress management from an Islamic perspective. And the stress we're talking about in today's khutbah is the stress that accompanies a type of hardship, some type of tribulation, whether it may be outward or inward, an outward struggle or an inward struggle. That is the stress we're talking about. When you look at the dictionary definition of the word stress, you often find any kind of physical or emotional tension. And this is somewhat what we're talking about, emotional tension. That inward feeling, that, that it's sort of like a pain, discomfort, displeasure, a frustration, that sometimes you might want something, but you don't know how to get it. Right? Something may happen to you, like the the loss of a loved one, but you don't know how to react, right? You're in a state of confusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us clear advice as to how to react to a state of stress, right? Any kind of fitna, any kind of hardship. He tells us in Surah Al-Mulk, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا That the creation of life and death 
was in order for us to be tested. And he tells us in Surah Al-Bala, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Which literally means, we have created mankind in a state of, in a state of hardship, i.e. stress. That we were created to encounter stress. So stress is normal, stress is natural. And Sheikh Abdullah Uduro from Yaqeen Institute also said stress is knowledge. Through stressful situations, we may learn a lot, both about ourselves and about the dunya. As you grow older, you begin to realize that the dunya, that we as humans are weak. And that the dunya is nothing but a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we develop such a strong love for that creation. But deep down, we, each and every one of us knows that when we die, none of that which we chase that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be of any benefit to us in our graves. So this dunya has been created in order for us to be tested. That's the number one thing we must get down. We must truly believe that our lives, we were created in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to indulge in the dunya heedlessly forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our purpose as humans. We must always remember that stress is an opportunity for us to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no way around stress. What happens to us will happen, but how we react is a choice of ours. Right? Whatever stress you may encounter, regardless of how hard you may try, you cannot avoid it. But that hardship, that tribulation, how you react to it is what you will be held accountable for. You lost a loved one. Do you become disobedient and ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the countless blessings He has given to you? Or do you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi wa Indeed, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we belong and to Him we return. Does that bring you closer to Him? Does visiting the grave and attending someone's funeral make you question life and death? Or does it allow you to truly understand the reality of life? Is that cause you to think, what will I be after I die? What will remain with me after I die? And this is what hardship should bring us, what tribulation should bring us. It should allow us to recognize our incapabilities, our weaknesses, our neediness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what we have been created for. To recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of happiness. And pleasing Him will bring us eternal pleasure. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest of creation, we can look to him as an example. The most beloved of mankind to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet he was tried. He was put through countless hardships. From the moment he was born until the moment he died, we can think of whenever he first began to spread Islam. From the moment Islam was spread publicly until the Muslims made hijrah, they were constantly being persecuted to the point where the Muslims took uh, they, they were forced to hide in a valley and eat leaves for survival these were the Sahaba of the Allah the best of humans after the Prophet after the Prophet Muhammad and the, the Anbiya and yet they were still put through such hard so, so much hardship so we must recognize that hardship is not a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rather it is an opportunity for us to react in a manner that, that is pleasing to Him Whatever struggle we go through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is understanding of that struggle And don't ever think that simply because your struggle can be seen by the people around you That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in order of that struggle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that struggle, that is internal, that no one can see but him, that no one is aware of but him. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And so we talked about the purpose of the creation of trouble, of stress, of hardship, of tribulation. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us in our belief in Him. We may often not think about it, but situations in which we're uncomfortable are the situations in which we learn the most. When you're uncomfortable, you don't want to do that good action, but you still push yourself to do it, that is when you, you get the most out of it. That is when you get the most, the, the, the sweetest of Iman that you taste is the greatest. And that is essentially why Allah SWT has created fitna, so that we may react in a manner that is pleasant to Him. So, we talked about fitna and why it was created in encountering it in a manner that is pleasant to Allah SWT. Let us talk about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects his servants to react to fitna. And he tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, بَعْدَ عَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُ مُصِيبَةِ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْمُهْتَدُونَ That those when afflicted with hardship, they say, Indeed to Allah we belong and to Him we return. And so, when you encounter hardship, always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at it from an Islamic perspective. What can I benefit from this? How will me reacting in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit me both in this life and after death? Because the life after death is the true life. That is when we can't go back. We can't do any more good. And all that will be benefit of benefit to us is what we have done in this life. So sab, patience and remembrance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will reward or punish, punish us for the struggle that we go through. Uh, whether or not it is done for his sake. So sab and tawakkul that we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what situation you are in, if you ever ever think that there's no way I can get any good out of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is certainly punish me, punishing me. That is from the shaitan. Whatever situation, situation you are in is an opportunity for you to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at the, the four major scholars of Sunni Islam, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad, and Imam Abu Hanifa, if you read about them, you know that each and every one of them was politically persecuted. Some of them jailed, some of them tortured, yet they were great people. So always remember that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting you through a great trial and you uh, react in a manner that is losing to Him, you will be rewarded greatly. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to act upon that which we have learned and that He makes us from those who were inflicted with hardship say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا اللهم اجعلنا من الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون اللهم اجعل أعمالنا صالحة واجعلها لك خالصة ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهبنا من لديك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك وصل اللهم وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربي ورب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة